Crypto Pirates Daily News February 7, 2022 News Headlines Winter is on its way. Here are five strategies for surviving a crypto bear market. Why do some countries refuse to deal with cryptocurrency? Three things that the crypto sector must provide in order for TradFi to become genuinely mainstream. How artificial intelligence is changing the real estate industry. The life cycle of a Ponzi scheme and crypto liquidity. Can Bitcoin price recover after breaking a crucial level? Despite a tough start to 2022, these indications may favor Bitcoin and Ethereum. A beginner's guide to becoming eligible for token airdrops. How Bitcoin is assisting in the fight for justice in Canada, Russia, and in the case of Julian Assange. Can Ethereum's 380% annual growth rate be replicated in 2022? Winter is on its way. Here are five strategies for surviving a crypto bear market. The multi-month drop in crypto prices is reminding veteran investors of the 2018 crypto winter. Here are five things investors may do to stay afloat during a bad market. The cryptocurrency market has an unusual tendency of catching even the most seasoned veterans off guard with each bull and bear market initially resembling prior cycles before veering off in an unexpected path and wiping out the fortunes of freshly minted crypto millionaires. This was the case with the lackluster 2021 close, which entirely contradicted the bullish $100,000 BTC price projections that crypto researchers and influencers had been pushing continuously. Bitcoin is already more than 50% off its all-time high of $69,000, and altcoins have done even worse, with many down more than 60% in the last two months. Traders must regroup and re-evaluate their investment approach in times like these, rather than simply purchasing every price drop. Here are five tactics traders can employ to avoid a crypto winter and save as much value in their account as possible. Reduce your exposure to volatile altcoins. When a broad market slump begins, the first step is to reassess current positions and limit exposure to the most volatile assets. Because many token holders are new to the community and not long-term investors like the user bases for more established projects, they are frequently new projects that have emerged from trendy segments of the crypto market such as meme coins, NFTs, or rebase projects like Wonderland TIME. Looking at a project's GitHub account to see the degree of activity and the number of engineers working to developing out the protocol is a good place to start the evaluation process. If there is little progress despite flashy marketing gimmicks and great promises, the project may be one that an investor should abandon when the market begins to slow. Traders might then invest these funds in stablecoins, which can be staked to receive yield or purchased when the market falls. Averaging costs in dollars Dollar cost averaging DCA is the technique of purchasing an item in installments over time in order to average out the price paid and account for volatility-induced price variations. While the DCA technique is a fantastic way to gradually build exposure to fundamentally viable enterprises, it is usually advisable to wait until the dust has settled and a phase of consolidation has begun. Dollar cost averaging should be focused on initiatives with active growth, engaged communities, and a roadmap outlining how the project will grow and remain viable in the future. Staking Staking is possibly the simplest approach to raise the long-term value of a portfolio, 
and it relieves the pressure of fretting about daily price swings because the staked asset continues to accrue tokens. Most Layer 1 protocols, including Solana, Cardano, Polygon, and Avalanche, allow users to stake their native token on the network to receive a return. Ether holders can also stake their tokens on the ETH2 beacon chain, but it's crucial to note that staking rewards will not be available until ETH2 is fully deployed. There are numerous other staking options available, ranging from gaming protocols such as Axie Infinity and Illuvium to NFT marketplaces such as Looks Rare. so once a deep dive has been completed and fundamentally sound projects have been selected, staking becomes a matter of setting it and forgetting it. Find initiatives with expanding ecosystems and benefits. When the market becomes bearish, projects that let token holders earn through staking, liquid staking, borrowing, and airdrops are also worth considering. Staking is the most basic form of this as the number of tokens grows over time, but additional options include token launchpads, NFT marketplaces, and protocols recognized for providing airdrops to community members. The Cosmos, ATOM, network and its developing community of projects connected via the inter-blockchain communication technology is one example of a protocol that rewards early adopters, IBC. Atom holders and those who have participated in the Osmosis, OSMO, decentralized exchange have been rewarded with a slew of airdrops from projects emerging within the ecosystem to help boost activity in their communities. Make an investment in yourself. Investing in oneself by learning something new is one of the most personally beneficial things an investor can do during a depressed market. This will not only help investors resist the temptation to sell and miss out on future gains, but it may also lead to new opportunities for wealth creation. Despite the market downturn, cryptocurrencies continue to march towards general use, and the number of jobs in the blockchain sector will only grow in the future. Whether it's learning to program in Solidity, experimenting with graphic and digital design to create a new line of NFTs, or simply conducting research to obtain a better grasp of the many business sectors. Finally, the secret to surviving a bear market is to remain optimistic and patient. Why do some countries refuse to deal with cryptocurrency? One month into 2022, the cryptocurrency debate is already raging, with requests for regulation producing a schism between governments that are crypto-friendly and those that aren't. Which of the following will influence the market's future? Dmitry Chernyshenko, Russia's deputy prime minister, is said to have signed a roadmap to govern crypto activities in Russia. The announcement comes after Russia's central bank issued a consultation paper proposing a total ban on cryptocurrency-related activity in the nation. According to the research, cryptocurrencies, trends, concerns, and regulation, wider adoption of cryptocurrencies raises major risks for the Russian financial industry. It claims that non-state-based currencies endanger citizens' well-being by causing investment losses due to market instability, scams, and cyber assaults. Jurisdictions have wrestled with the notion that decentralized digital currencies provide an alternative to sovereign money, and hence constitute a challenge to central banks' ability to control monetary policy. Although Russia has refrained from entirely restricting activities within its borders, the new developments are part of a larger pattern of states trying to embrace Bitcoin. The future of the sector will be determined by future bans or regulations. Is it better to be anti-crypto or pro-crypto? China has repeatedly prohibited Bitcoin trading. An outright ban on crypto mining last year was a huge blow to the business, given the majority of crypto mining took place in China. 
Mining is the process of executing software on computer servers in order to solve cryptographic algorithms. This procedure validates transactions and keeps a shared record of them across the blockchain network. Participants, known as miners, are automatically paid in cryptocurrency. Mining is a global industry, and significant sums of money are invested on the land, power, and infrastructure required to set up mining warehouses. The Chinese mining embargo compelled miners to sell or ship their equipment abroad and invest funds in friendlier nations, primarily the United States. As mining operations were diversified, the network was strengthened as a result. As a result, future prohibitions may have less impact on the market. Currently, the majority of Bitcoin mining takes place in the United States, Kazakhstan, Russia, Canada, Malaysia, and Iran. Some networks are confronted with significant obstacles. For example, in Kazakhstan, power has apparently been rationed away from miners in order to conserve energy during power outages, pushing miners to flee the nation. According to reports, Kazakhstan's economy will lose 1.5 billion US dollars, or 2.14 billion Australian dollars, over the next five years, including 300 million US dollars in tax revenue. Crypto isn't completely anonymous. Since Bitcoin's anonymous birth in 2009, cryptocurrency has gone a long way. There are currently thousands of cryptocurrencies, with a total market cap of over 1.66 trillion US dollars, almost 2.36 trillion Australian dollars. It is frequently argued, especially in a recent report by Russia's central bank, that the anonymity of cryptocurrencies facilitates unlawful behavior such as money laundering, terrorism financing, and drug trafficking. This is not totally correct. In truth, the transaction history on public blockchains such as Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two largest by market value, is open to the world. Many governments, including those in Australia and the United States, work with huge private blockchain analytics corporations to track individuals' crypto wallet addresses and transactions. They do this to reduce the likelihood of money laundering and tax evasion. Contrary to popular misconception, most cryptocurrencies are pseudonymous rather than anonymous. If a person's identity is linked to their wallet address via a central touchpoint, such as a cryptocurrency exchange or an email, that wallet can be traced back to that person. According to research, commissioned by Zcash but conducted by the RAND Corporation, there is no widespread criminal use of privacy coins that protect users' anonymity. Future directions will be determined by policy. Cryptocurrency is becoming more popular as a financial asset class, technological infrastructure, and a social experiment in non-state-based infrastructure. As a result, crypto communities are gaining clout in public policy debates. Last year, for example, crypto proponents were able to stall a significant federal government infrastructure bill in the United States. Nonetheless, jurisdictions take diverse paths in terms of policy and legislation. Some countries, including China and Russia, see it as a budgetary and ideological challenge to sovereign currencies. Others see it as a chance for economic growth, innovation, and investment. As new techniques develop, 2022 could be a watershed moment for both the crypto business and those vying to ban or welcome it. In the past, governments that welcomed crypto networks reaped economic rewards in the form of innovation, investment, jobs, and taxation. Access to new demography and technological efficiencies in treasury management are among the business benefits of embracing cryptocurrency as a digital asset. At the same time, the industry's response to policy and regulation illustrates that cryptocurrency isn't a wholly decentralized entity that resides just on the blockchain.
The status of Australia. In the race to limit but gain from cryptocurrencies, Australia has emerged as a prospective crypto-friendly country. The Senate Select Committee on Australia as a Technology and Financial Centre produced a report in October that is favourable to cryptocurrencies. It offers market licensing for cryptocurrency exchanges, simplified taxation, and a regulatory structure for decentralized autonomous organizations, or DAOs. These operate under the same self-governance idea as decentralized cryptocurrency networks, with blockchain technology and cryptocurrency tokens used to manage participation and enforce regulations. Australia's option is to capitalize on the massive economic potential of decentralized digital assets. It remains to be seen how this will affect the national economy. However, if history is a lesson to be learned, we can expect policy to influence outcomes. Three things that the crypto sector must provide in order for TradFi to become genuinely mainstream. Earlier this year, we witnessed the crypto economic system experience exponential boom as massive sums of money were poured into various cryptocurrencies, decentralized finance, DeFi, non-fungible tokens, NFT, crypto indices, insurance coverage goods, and decentralized options marketplaces. The total value locked, TVL, in the DeFi industry has increased from $18 billion in January 2021 to $240 billion in January 2022 across all chains. With so much liquidity in the ecosystem, the crypto loan market has increased significantly, from $60 million in January 2021 to more than $400 million by January 2022. Regardless of the exponential advancement and innovation in DeFi products, the crypto lending market is primarily limited to token collateralized loans, which need the pledge of one cryptocurrency as collateral to borrow another coin. There are other platforms that provide NFT collateralized loans, such as Nexo and Genesis, however the service is mostly for institutional buyers with blue-chip NFTs. There aren't any more than token collateralized loans available for retail lots. If the crypto economy is to grow to the size of any real economy, it must reach out to a large number of retail customers and be able to provide them with financing options. The following are the critical factors that must be developed before crypto banking infrastructure can compete with that of banks. A diverse range of items and businesses. One of the most frequently asked questions from someone who is new to the crypto economy is, what can I buy? Apart from NFTs, DeFi merchandise, staking, and liquidity provision, there isn't much more in the current architecture. Currency exists in a typical economic system because exchanging items for companies, or vice versa, does not always have a one-to-one -one ratio, hence currencies serve the purpose of facilitating product and company transactions. Currency exists in the crypto-economic system before goods and services are widely available to customers. As a result, judging cryptocurrencies is difficult and volatile. An economy must have enough things and businesses to provide enough supply and demand for customers to utilize currencies to exchange for these items and businesses. With solely NFTs and DeFi monetary goods in the current crypto ecosystem, it's very difficult to entice the common Joe or Jane into the financial system because there's just not a lot for them to eat. A healthy and functional banking system also requires a sufficient supply of liquidity from buyer deposits and a sufficient demand for borrowing from prospects. With more digital objects and services in the metaverse, particularly non-financial ones like artwork, music, real estate, or gaming gear, the banking system will be able to use them as collateral to provide a variety of secured loans. Customers in the crypto world will be able to own these items by paying on a regular basis in the future, just as car loans or mortgages. 
a reliable credit scoring system. In today's crypto lending market, no credit check or credit rating system is required for customers to borrow any cryptocurrency. It's because the mortgage is over collateralized with a closely regulated loan to value LTV ratio. As soon as the LTV exceeds the liquidation LTV level, the collateral can be sold at a discount in order to pay off the mortgage. The collateral value is rarely fully utilized, and there is always a large buffer available in case of unexpected collateral value degradation. Prospects in traditional banking are assigned a credit score based on their previous transactional behavior and financial condition, such as annual earnings, savings, mortgage repayments, and investments. That is nearly impossible in the cryptocurrency loan market because wallets are created anonymously and anyone can create as many wallets as they want. This makes tracing transactional behaviors and constructing a credit score rating very difficult. Customers must be incentivized to build a good track report of all of the acts inside a pockets and to be loyal to the pockets in order for the current structure to change. There are scores similar to lunatic rankings for terror to rank order engagements within a given chain, but there does not appear to be any credit specific scoring to rank order pockets homeowners financial position. As more jobs are developed in the crypto space and more people are paid in cryptocurrency, wallets that provide a lengthy healthful track report of behaviors resembling a consistent revenue of money influx, consistent secure stability, or regular repayments to a crypto mortgage should be recognized. The incentive may be access to larger loans with lower interest rates, or access to longer term loans, or even governance token airdrops. Both the lender and the borrower would benefit from a strong credit scoring system. By making additional loans to creditworthy debtors, lenders can earn higher interest rates while taking on less risk, debtors can benefit from lower interest rates, longer term loans, and other potential benefits. Most importantly, a credit rating system can assist in the formation of a more clear and healthy crypto lending market, hence attracting more users to the ecosystem. A collateral analysis system that is actively monitored. Given the extraordinarily risky nature of cryptocurrencies, at least for the time being, the collateral worth must be reviewed more frequently than in a traditional secured mortgage. Unlike traditional collateral, such as automobiles or houses, whose values are more predictable and do not fluctuate substantially in a short period of time, collateral in the crypto world, such as NFTs or cryptocurrencies, may experience unexpected drawback actions at any time. As a result, strong collateral analysis tools that can assess the market value of any asset at any moment are critical for lending platforms. It is not difficult to determine the market value of NFTs or cryptocurrencies on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. However, if more products and services become available in the crypto ecosystem and more types of property become acceptable as collateral, having a high-frequency collateral analysis system may become costly. Alternatively, lending platforms can develop something akin to the concept of risk-weighted property RWA, in the banking world to provide extra threat weights, lower liquidation LTV thresholds, to riskier collateral and fewer to safer collateral so they don't essentially require a high-frequency collateral analysis system. Blue-chip NFTs, such as the Board Ape Yacht membership BAYC, could, for example, be assigned a higher liquidation LTV threshold and examined less frequently. As more historical NFT costs become available, more information points can be gathered and used to derive a more accurate threat weight measure. As more commodities and services become available in the crypto economy, a reliable credit score scoring system and an actively managed collateral analysis system will enable crypto banking infrastructure to provide more financing choices aside from token collateralized loans. The long-range outlook of crypto finance is dependent on the kinds of things and providers available to the crypto economic system, 
and it may merely compete with the size of traditional banks as the crypto economic system expands into a more diverse and appealing marketplace to extra customers. How artificial intelligence is changing the real estate industry? Making informed home decisions with innovative data is transforming the way the real estate market operates. Data Hunters chats with Malcolm Cannon of Quantarium on how AI and computer vision are transforming the real estate industry. The use of many data points, ranging from historical pricing and trends to property ownership information, is nothing new. However, the data we use to make housing decisions has become more complex. Property values are provided by Quantarium's valuation algorithms, which use a self-learning AI engine. Quantarium's innovations in computer vision CV, technology are allowing AVM to break free from past limits. Understanding their path and the influence of AI is crucial for the future of real estate. Quantarium is a market leader in the production and distribution of value-added data in residential real estate. Their data and analytics scientists and specialists shown remarkable ingenuity in their approach to establishing the industry's premier RE data lake, so receiving this honor is a team-wide confirmation. Cannon explained the possibilities of this space when asked, Residential real estate in the United States is worth $45 trillion in total. Furthermore, homes are the most important and significant investment slash asset for the majority of families. As a result, dependable, intelligent, timely, accurate, and accessible real estate data is critical not only to this sector but to the entire economy. PropTech, as the business has been dubbed, is a thriving industry, and we're excited not only to be a part of it, but also to help other players tell their story. Quantarium's product and customer journey provide an intriguing glimpse into how artificial intelligence is being used in real estate. They began with an idea and ended up developing the industry's leading automated valuation model, AVM, which continues to break the tape in the AVM race. They used their skills and experience to create a data and search platform for real estate that is driven by the industry's most extensive data lake. They may power any industry that uses residential real estate data, from mortgage companies to banks to insurance, by stressing the platform part. In the data industry, there is a lot of debate over the merits of technology versus people, ranging from the benefits of consistency and efficiency to the decrease of bias in housing pricing and access. When asked about this, Cannon stated that, despite being an AI company, Quantarium has never been exclusively technocratic, we, like everyone else, would underline the undeniable value of human understanding in all aspects of society, including this critical sector of the economy. The debate is frequently presented in binary terms, which we reject. We see growing confidence in the category of hybrid valuation products as evidence that the industry will benefit from, and work towards, an equipoise in understanding both the methods and instruments through which human wisdom and tasking are best applied and those areas in which machine learning technologies can be most advantageous. Cannon recognized the significance of applying this knowledge in this specific field of technology, which is why Quantarium's translucent AI is embedded in their valuation services platform, QSVP, as a human-assisted and enhanced technological asset. It was designed in this manner on purpose. Quantarium's translucent AI-based solutions enable an auditable line of sight to provide the best platform for expert human input integration, if needed, to achieve the best results possible. In truth, this should be expected, for example, most electronic aeroplanes and spacecraft still have manual controls for takeoff and landing. AVM is now breaking free from past limits in other domains, such as Quantarium's developments in computer vision, CV, technology. 
These AVMs are approaching the point where they are unable to recognize property condition or look inside the structure in order to account for value changes other than assuming a static coefficient of average condition for the year built. Furthermore, the authenticity of Quantarium CV can detect and delete tenants' images and other symbols that may be humanly perceived to imply racial or ethnic identities, thereby introducing unjustified subjectivity in the valuation or QC process. Having said that, Cannon felt it was vital to elaborate on the problems of AI in tackling bias. At the end of the day, understanding the challenge for AI to assist in reducing bias will be required. Certain axioms persist, most notably that every technology is only as good as the data on which it is based. Quantarium is very aware of this. As a result, it recognizes that models rely on trailing data, and that data has unavoidably saturated within, whatever earlier human biases contributed to distorted valuations. With this information in mind, Quantarium refrains from making any claims regarding AVM's reducing valuation bias, it is deceptive, and eradicating this will require more than simply technology. Can it be useful in addressing the problem? Yes, and Quantarium is making considerable R&D investments with the goal of supporting the industry in addressing the problem. There is certainly evidence of racial bias in real estate. However, while technology is frequently regarded as a neutral tool, the data on which it is based is biased. As a result, real estate data suppliers will need to undertake a lot more work to uncover and eliminate bias, and AI will play an essential role in this process. Quantarium has already invested in our and in this area. Canon is now looking ahead, pondering high vision for Quantarium in 2022. Quantarium, like all businesses, has had to react to the realities of a COVID economy and the influence it has had on the global business climate. Despite this, they can focus on strong tailwinds like machine learning, computer vision, CV, and data innovation. These tailwinds are in high demand because they will have a greater impact on the future of both commercial marketplaces and the regulatory environment. Furthermore, Quantarium has created a name for itself in various aspects of this market, and as a result, we are lucky to have a network of amazing professionals across the business, especially in the rapidly developing prop tech space. Canon then explains that their vision is to provide our rapidly growing customer adoptions with innovation and rapid deployments of proficiency technologies ranging from our new computer vision APIs and valuation services to our smart market explorer TM within the Quantarium Terraversid to assist our customers in navigating the industry challenges ahead. Life cycle of a Ponzi scheme and crypto liquidity. With the Federal Reserve set to begin raising interest rates in a few weeks, I thought it was time to return to a discussion of crypto now that the era of easy money post COVID is over. Many people still don't believe the Fed can stop QE, let alone reduce its balance sheet, and as a result, the refrain you can't taper a Ponzi can be heard from every corner of financial media. I tend to agree with that sentiment because, of course, all Ponzi schemes necessitate the constant inflow of new funds in order to maintain the asset values of the previous round of funding. After all, this is exactly what a Ponzi scheme is. But in a world of Ponzi's built on top of Ponzi's built on top of Ponzi's, the notion that the biggest one, on which all the others are built, can't save itself for a while by popping all of the daughter Ponzi's is a little disingenuous, if not outright obtuse. That isn't because debt-based currency regimes aren't inherently Ponzi schemes. Yes, they do. It's because, once the currency pile is created, it has the ability to move to where it is best treated and away from assets that are most vulnerable to liquidation. So, in the real world, as it unfolds in real time, the situation is far more complicated than you can't taper a Ponzi.
that is correct in the long run. However, when it comes to deciding where to invest one's money in order to earn a profit, this is simply not the case. And this has been the most difficult lesson I've attempted to teach my readers and patrons over the years. It's one thing to accurately predict a system's end state. Total and complete collapse is unavoidable in the case of the US dollar reserve system. It's another thing entirely to predict when this will happen and in what order the system will fail. This was the main issue I had to deal with in the early stages of my financial writing career. It simply isn't good enough in 2013 to say, in 10 to 15 years, all of these losing picks in gold or oil will be winners because the dollar is doomed, when publishing a newsletter where you lay out an investment thesis and give people your best ideas. My approach needed to improve, become more nuanced, and, frankly, become more in tune with market ebbs and flows while still adhering to my Austro-Libertarian analytic framework. I recall a particularly trying period in January 2015, when I finally admitted that, no matter how much I despised the US dollar in relation to a hard asset like gold, my opinion didn't matter and the market was still king. The Fed and other central banks still had a lot of clout with investors, so they had a lot of ammunition in their monetary arsenal. Yes, they were merely kicking the can down the road, resulting in a bigger problem tomorrow, but that didn't mean there wasn't money to be made today. That was the point at which I had to decide whether I wanted to get better at this or quit. It meant truly humbling myself in front of the market and accepting that you aren't a one-of-a-kind snowflake or any other such nonsense. You are following in the footsteps of others, and you will continue to do so. It meant going all in on what I do now, combining the global macro picture with political and social trends and placing them in a context of seemingly limitless corruption capable of supporting hundreds of Ponzi schemes around the world simply because everyone wanted to believe in them. Dexter White and I have had a running debate about the liquidity of the cryptocurrency market for years. He consistently emphasizes that cryptocurrency liquidity is primarily determined by the flow of capital into and out of Bitcoin, BTC. Everything else is a derivative of that, and if you control the flow into Bitcoin, you control what Ponzi schemes can survive in that market. But, in my opinion, that argument was far more valid in 2017-18 than it is now. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies have been in an unusual state since the peak in April 2021. Bitcoin is clearly in a counter-trend bear market, while the rotation out of it and into other areas of the cryptocurrency space has seen spectacular booms and equally spectacular busts. Following that, the sloshing of liquidity through various projects has made and cost a lot of people a lot of money. With the Fed tightening dollar liquidity beginning in June of last year and the Bank of England getting ahead of the Fed in raising rates in the face of crippling inflation, we're now in a much different environment than we were this time last year when everything crypto was going swimmingly. However, it was the massive bull market that lasted through the first half of 2021 that saw tremendous liquidity flow into all kinds of new projects new ideas for generating yield in order to attract capital. It makes no difference whether or not they are Ponzi schemes. It's difficult not to draw that conclusion from the current DAO apocalypse in rebasing projects like Olympus DAO. You pay out 7,000 plus percent for any length of time with no reason to stay in the token other than the number go up, and you are worse than any emerging market subject to hot money flows. You're a ticking time bomb with a short fuse, ready to explode in everyone's face. I consider this an explosion, especially for a project that is less than a year old, going from $800 to $35 and back to around $60 in two months. That was without a doubt. Paying a yield to attract capital with no intention of doing anything with that capital other than holding it is playing chicken with investors, waiting for the first guy to cash out and start the avalanche of selling. 
It makes no difference whether you're the Bank of Turkey or some random guy with a few servers and a GitHub repository. We're seeing a massive acceleration of the life cycle of these types of projects in crypto. Olympus has already spawned a slew of imitators, owing to its ability to raise nearly $2 billion in capital in a matter of months at its peak. I'd say it was a combination of stupid greed, the insane amount of price appreciation in crypto, and a genuine desire to build something new. Projects like that exist only because the current capital formation system is even more corrupt and unequal than a piece of code with minimal controls over money flow. Unfortunately, this is how innovation takes place, through a lot of painful trial and error, as well as a lot of crippling losses. There is, however, no way out of the current hamster wheel of central bank-backed Ponzi schemes without this environment. To grow up, crypto must build on Bitcoin's foundation in a sustainable way, where the replacements for the current upper layers of Exeter's pyramid are self-contained enough that the capital that flows into Bitcoin at the bottom is treated well enough that it has no desire to leave and return to the fiat one. It is unusual for a new technology to work flawlessly the first time it is introduced. So, I don't consider Olympus a failure because it's pointing innovators in new and interesting directions in their quest to solve the Ponzi math and achieve that elusive sustainability that can only be achieved by converting capital into real-world assets. They do so because the goal is admirable, to put an end to the systemic theft of debt-based fiat money. In the case of one new crypto project I've discovered, the time risk of traditional lending is even reversed in such a way that the entrepreneur is free of Wall Street's vultures. Bitcoin maximalists believe Bitcoin has attained this level of perfection, and they have yet to be proven incorrect. They haven't been proven wrong, however. Only time will tell how many imitators come and go. And I'm perfectly content to be both optimistic and pessimistic about the prospect. However, Bitcoin cannot contain all human activity or desired outcomes. This is where we are now, and it is for this reason that things like the spectacular booms and busts of the various DeFi platforms are necessary growing pains. This is something that humans are prone to. We go through every bad idea and iterate on it until something viable emerges, if at all. Even projects that have had their fundamentals challenged, such as Olympus, and are still learning from their mistakes, have a future in helping us understand what can be done to avoid the Ponzi trap. One valid criticism leveled at cryptocurrency is, what's the point if we can't use these tokens, these magical beans that yield yield, to buy real things in the real world? Isn't that, after all, what money is? A place to temporarily park your savings while you save up for something you want or need in the future. As the old system teeters and cracks, and those who broke it try to shuck and jive us into throwing good money after bad while their Ponzi schemes fail, it is at this critical juncture in time that new ideas, good and bad, flourish. Someone will crack that code in order to more efficiently convert math's promise into real-world wealth, just as someone will always try to manipulate it so they don't have to work for their dinner. Can Bitcoin price recover after breaking a crucial level? The king of cryptocurrencies continues to soar, attracting the whole crypto market, which is now valued at more than $2 trillion. Is this the start of yet another comeback, or just a brief respite before another downfall? Bitcoin appears to have reached a level of stability. Prices have begun to rise somewhat and are already at their highest in two weeks. On Friday, February 4th, the king of cryptocurrencies surpassed the significant threshold of $40,000 per unit for the first time since January 22nd. At the time of press, it was worth roughly $41,627. To be sure, 
we are still a long way from the November 10th record of $69,044.77, but it is a figure that will definitely satisfy cryptocurrency enthusiasts. Bitcoin is dragging the rest of the cryptocurrency market with it, Ether, the native currency of the Ethereum network, was up 5.9% on Saturday to $3,029.42, while its biggest competitors Solana, Avalanche, and Avalanche gained 9.2% and 9.5%, respectively. Solana, the visa of crypto, was victimized this week by the loss of more than $320 million from the decentralized finance, DeFi, Project Wormhole, which connects the Solana blockchain to other decentralized blockchain networks. According to CoinGecko, the crypto market worth has increased slightly above $2 trillion. It thus recovered at least $300 billion in a few of days. These increases, which are as ferocious as the recent declines, serve as further evidence of cryptocurrency volatility. In terms of fundamentals, nothing truly supports this bounce. Is this a Bitcoin short squeeze? Normally, the positive January monthly employment report released on Friday would cause Bitcoin values to fall. Because, in principle, the data released by the US Labor Department should prompt the Federal Reserve to aggressively boost interest rates in order to avoid overheating the labor market. Bitcoin has historically reacted poorly to tighter monetary policy, which helps less risky financial assets more. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, 467,000 new jobs were created last month, with the headline unemployment rate climbing from a post-pandemic low of 4% to 4%. The January tally was well ahead of the street consensus prediction of 150,000. At the same time, Marathon Digital Holdings, one of North America's top enterprise Bitcoin self-mining companies, stated on Friday that it had boosted the amount of Bitcoins in its hands to 8,595 Bitcoins worth $338 million in January. Marathon demonstrates its long-term commitment to Bitcoin by continuing to create it at such a high rate, plus 816% more than in January 2021. In January, we boosted our Bitcoin holdings to 8,595 BTC and grew our Bitcoin production 816% year over year, said Fred Thiel, Marathon CEO, in a press release. We have strengthened our technical staff to explore immersion and other options that may allow us to further optimize the efficiency of our mining fleet, he added. Bitcoin has shrugged off the payroll dip and is surging on momentum purchasing. The $40,000 barrier may be tested, stated Edward Moyer, senior market analyst at the foreign exchange firm Oanda, in a note. It is not ruled out that the recent resurgence is the result of a short squeeze. A short squeeze occurs when a large number of investors who have bet that a security or stock will fall all try to liquidate their positions at the same time. This race frequently results in a high demand for stocks or financial assets. Despite a tough start to 2022, these indications may favor Bitcoin and Ethereum. In 2022, the entire cryptocurrency market is off to a difficult start. Bitcoin fell to a three-month low as global markets resumed their post-New Year's Eve sell-off due to a variety of factors. Ethereum fared much worse at the start of 2022, falling roughly 18% in response to hawkish Federal Reserve meeting minutes. Macroeconomic forces can save the day. Despite the bad market, Bloomberg's senior commodity strategist, Mike McGlone, issued a research highlighting positive prospects for two cryptos. He mentioned a few elements that could add to BTC and ETH's positive trajectory. Top cryptocurrencies, according to the executive, 
may have a comparative edge over other investment classes. This is why. As the US midterm elections near, cryptocurrency assets may have a lot going for them, particularly in comparison to inflation-related commodities. Typical demand and supply elasticity, as well as crude prices inflated by the threat of war in Ukraine, are powerful triggers for reviving oil's long-running bear market. Bitcoin and Ethereum are the polar opposites. According to the analysis, supply elasticity was negative for the top two cryptos, and prices fell within bull markets. Furthermore, fears about inflation put politicians under pressure to produce while much of potential U.S. commodity output was stifled by regulation. According to McGlone, we predict U.S. authorities will embrace cryptos with proper regulation and ETFs for the following reasons, dollar domination, jobs, votes, a lot of revenue, tax, and, most crucially, it will go against China's aversion. In comparison to the most important commodity, the most important commodity, according to the research, is crude oil. However, the norms of supply and demand elasticity, as well as the adoption of a breakthrough technology, could help crypto prices rise in comparison to commodities. Bitcoin is gaining traction as a benchmark worldwide digital asset, while decarbonization and electrification are replacing oil. When compared to the Bloomberg Commodity Index total return, the swiftly rising and more volatile Bloomberg Galaxy Crypto Index, R1, increased dramatically, L1. McGlone previously reaffirmed a similar long-term optimistic outlook for BTC and ETH. He had stated that both crypto assets were still in their early adoption stages, although showing evidence of long-term viability. What the numbers say on-chain indicators also support Bitcoin and Ethereum's bullish surge. According to Glassnode, a data analytics tool, Bitcoin's liveliness demonstrated a preference for hodling over spending. Aside from that, ETH indicators such as non-zero addresses and number of addresses holding 10 plus coins set all-time highs. A Beginner's Guide to Becoming Eligible for Token Airdrops With this detailed guide, you can learn how to qualify for forthcoming token airdrops. Understanding Airdrops Airdrops, or free token giveaways, have been commonplace in the Bitcoin community over the previous few years. Simply put, an airdrop is the free distribution of crypto tokens to early adopters of a decentralized application, blockchain service, or other cryptocurrency user. Tokens that have been airdropped are often utilized for protocol governance and utility within an application. Many crypto and DeFi projects have distributed governance tokens worth thousands of dollars to individual community members, demonstrating the rich opportunity that comes with being early to initiatives. Airdrops can also be used as an efficient marketing strategy for protocols to attract new users. The anticipation of free airdrops has increased activity on protocols that do not have their own tokens. For many crypto aficionados, airdrops are a method to receive thousands of dollars worth of tokens with a small initial investment. The phenomena has created a lot of buzz and excitement among cryptocurrency users who want to qualify for large rewards. This article focuses on some of the greatest ways for being eligible for airdrops. Searching for potential airdrops Scouting for prospective airdrops is one approach to improve your chances of obtaining free tokens. Users might begin by looking for famous projects that do not yet have a token but may do so in the future. Often, projects give signals that they may release a token in the future. During token creation events, 
projects commonly give 5 to 10% of their token supply to early adopters. Dedicated crypto airdrop websites, social media groups, and forums also provide useful information on alleged airdrops. Defy Airdrops, a Twitter account that specialized on highlighting anticipated airdrops in advance, is maybe the most useful resource. Defy Llama's airdrop page also mentions tokenless methods that may be used to organize airdrops. Some of the prominent projects speculated to be planning for airdrops in 2022 include NFT markets like OpenSea and Foundation, Ethereum Layer 2 projects like Arbitrum, Optimism, and Starkware, Defy protocols like Set Protocol, Open, and Shell Protocol, and huge cross-chain bridges like Hop Protocol. Help out new crypto projects. In addition to searching for projects, one efficient technique for increasing your odds of earning an airdrop reward is to actively use projects on blockchains such as Ethereum, Solana, Phantom, Avalanche, and Cosmos. Users might explore experimenting with tokenless applications in niches such as DeFi, NFTs, and GameFi. For example, if a viable lending protocol arises on Ethereum, contributing tokens to its liquidity pools may result in a future airdrop. While many of the largest airdrops to date have occurred on Ethereum, becoming involved in other ecosystems and playing with the technology as much as possible should only raise the possibilities of a future payout. Become involved to meet difficult eligibility criteria. While becoming an early adopter of new protocols is the first step towards getting prospective airdrops, making just one or two transactions may not be enough to qualify. The airdrop market has changed substantially in recent years. While thousands of users received lucrative airdrops from projects like Uniswap, Ethereum Name Service, and DYDX after making just one or two Ethereum transactions, airdrop eligibility criteria has become stricter across the board, thanks in part to cases like last year's Divergence Ventures saga, in which the VC fund farmed $2.5 million in tokens from Ribbon Finance after investing in the project. Many initiatives have employed severe eligibility limits in recent months. The November 2021 airdrop from Paraswap was limited to users who had done at least five swaps and largely went to users who had used the application on more than one blockchain. CowSwap, another Ethereum-based decentralized exchange aggregator, said last week that its airdrop would be limited to traders who have transacted a minimum of $1,000 in at least three trades. Due to the tight eligibility criteria that some protocols need, users may choose to become more involved with projects with each wallet they use in order to enhance their chances of obtaining a token reward. Go to Ethereum for high-value airdrops. By far the greatest network for the most lucrative airdrops among all Layer 1 blockchains with active DeFi and NFT ecosystems has been Ethereum. When Uniswap, 1inch, DYDX, Ethereum Name Service, Paraswap, and other projects airdropped their tokens on the network, they all dispersed at least $1,000 worth of tokens per user, and in some cases the prizes were significantly larger, those who held onto their tokens were often rewarded with higher returns too. To yet, such lucrative airdrops have been more difficult to come by on alternative Layer 1 blockchains such as Solana, Avalanche, Phantom, and Polygon, where transaction fees are significantly lower than Ethereum. The value of airdrops on networks other than Ethereum is frequently diluted due to the large volume of user wallets engaging on other networks. Furthermore, many projects on blockchains other than Ethereum preserve their tokens for liquidity mining and other incentivization activities. Teams on Layer 1 networks with low transaction fees frequently use liquidity mining algorithms to avoid airdrop farming scenarios, in which individuals gain giveaways by communicating with a protocol using tens or even hundreds of Web3 wallets. As a result, 
employing Ethereum-based projects is more likely to result in an airdrop. Looks. Rare, a new NFT marketplace that airdropped tokens to OpenSea users last month, is a prime example of this. For the airdrop, the Looks Rare team only included OpenSea addresses that had exchanged at least 3 ETH on OpenSea's Ethereum application. Meanwhile, OpenSea users on Polygon did not make the cut. To use Ethereum and be eligible for airdrops on the network, users must first get ETH. It's critical to be conscious of the network's high gas costs, making transactions when there's less traffic can help you save money. Obtain a firm grip with NFTs. Another great way to participate in airdrops is to mint, buy, and hold NFTs. Many crypto enthusiasts have theorized that NFT collections may issue governance tokens in the future. Board Ape Yacht Club, for example, has already declared its intention to introduce a coin. Having the right NFT can also entitle holders to new NFTs. Board Ape Yacht Club airdropped Board Ape Kennel Club NFTs and mutant serums to Board Ape holders, while other collections such as Cool Cats and Damien Hurst's The Currency have also handed free new NFTs to holders in order to keep their communities interested. Being active in the NFT sector and discovering projects with strong communities is one of the greatest ways to qualify for airdrops, both in the form of governance tokens and new NFTs. Staking tokens The Cosmos ecosystem may be one of the greatest places to start for users who want to qualify for airdrops simply by holding and staking tokens. Many initiatives on Cosmos distribute coins to Atom holders. Cosmos is a Layer 0 blockchain interoperability technology that joins several Layer 1 chains via a central gateway. The notion of stake drops, which refers to airdrops offered in exchange for staking tokens on the network, distinguishes Cosmos from other blockchains. Many Atom stakeholders have received airdrops from projects building on the network in recent months. Aside from Atom, several crypto users have gotten airdrops from staking tokens for other Cosmos-based networks such as Terra, LUNA, and Osmosis, OSMO. While Cosmos stake drops are rarely as lucrative as those on Ethereum, the eligibility criteria are simpler. Last recommendations. Each token airdrop has different qualifying conditions, which adds uncertainty to the equation. Even current users are frequently removed from the final list of acceptable addresses. Rumored airdrops are frequently highly speculative. To launch tokens, certain protocols may use techniques other than airdrops. Rather of giving away free tokens, crypto firms frequently acquire funding through private token sales and list the token immediately on the market. Many companies use liquidity mining campaigns to disperse their assets as an incentive for delivering assets to liquidity pools. It is also crucial to recognize that there are numerous risks involved with airdrops. Hackers may use phishing scams to entice consumers to connect their wallet to a bogus airdrop website and deceive them into agreeing to allow smart contracts spend their assets. This is a common method for draining assets from wallets. Furthermore, some airdropped tokens have little to no trading market value, therefore it may not be worth claiming them after transaction expenses. It's always worth estimating the value of a token airdrop to verify it's greater than the charge to claim it. Seeking every rumored airdrop is likely to result in disappointment, as not every rumor will turn into a token giveaway. Furthermore, tokens handed out with no qualifying requirements rarely acquire substantial value. It takes time and effort to search for token airdrops. However, for those willing to put in the effort and experiment across the crypto ecosystem, 
the benefits can be enormous. How Bitcoin is assisting in the fight for justice in Canada, Russia, and in the case of Julian Assange. Funding any campaign opposed by the government was a Herculean undertaking a decade ago, as officials could quickly halt funds supplied through banks and other centralized corporations. Then Bitcoin appeared, and everything changed. Diverse groups are gathering funds in cryptocurrency all around the world, from Nigeria to the Philippines, Russia to Canada, to fund their non-violent and lawful protests. Julian Assange has raised $7.5 million for his legal battle in Bitcoin, Vladimir Putin's main rival is raising millions from prison in Bitcoin, and Canadian truckers have turned to BTC after GoFundMe betrayed them, these are just a few examples of how cryptos are at the forefront of the fight for liberty. The Assange DAO has raised $11 million to release the founder of WikiLeaks. Julian Assange is a well-known journalist from the United Kingdom. In 2006, Julian started WikiLeaks, which he used to disseminate a series of disclosures regarding the US government, including information about the Afghan and Iraqi wars. He was later apprehended and has been imprisoned in the United Kingdom since 2019. Despite widespread calls for his release from the international press and media, the US and British governments have remained staunchly opposed. The answer could come from a DAO, specifically the Assange DAO. This DAO was created specifically to fund his legal defense and campaign for his release. According to its website, its mission is to inspire a strong solidarity network and fight for Julian Assange's liberation. The DAO had raised 3,742 ETH as of press time, which is worth more than $11.2 million at the current price of slightly over $3,000 per ETH. The Dollar Justice token is awarded to those who give ETH. Truckers in Canada use Bitcoin to finance protests. Crypto is being used for more than simply a single person's independence. Truck drivers in Canada are utilizing BTC to gather funds for a campaign opposing the stringent COVID-19 regulations. The protests have received widespread attention around the world, with some truck drivers threatening to continue protesting for months. Their problem is Justin Trudeau's government's immunization mandate. Unvaccinated truckers who cross the border into the United States are subjected to quarantine upon their return to Canada, a practice that many people oppose. The Freedom Convoy, as it was dubbed, was raising cash for the protest through GoFundMe. GoFundMe, on the other hand, halted its campaign, which had raised approximately $9 million. Go. Fund. Me seized the donations and planned to distribute them to other charity, claiming that the Freedom Convoy had grown violent and disorderly. These truckers are now relying on the censorship-resistant cryptocurrency Bitcoin. The Bitcoin fundraiser raised a total of one Bitcoin on its first day. The campaign is optimistic about Bitcoin and claims that it has the potential to alter the world, stating, what makes what we're doing so effective is that anyone can do it. You have the ability to run a Bitcoin node. You have the ability to use the Lightning Network. You have the ability to create a censored fundraiser. Bitcoin has aided people in Afghanistan, Nigeria, Venezuela, Argentina, and, most recently, Canada. Ethereum's 380% annual growth rate be replicated in 2022? With only one month into the new year, most crypto tokens have lost the majority of the gains made in the previous year, yet recovery can ignite a fresh growth spurt. Ethereum, ETH, 
the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap, is one of the few cryptocurrencies that is nearly as well known as Bitcoin, the leader of the pack. And being in the spotlight has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. One significant advantage is international acceptance, as an investment asset, with people from all over the world investing in this specific cryptocurrency. But, as well known as it is in its own right, the cryptocurrency has difficulties following Bitcoin's lead, which frequently dictates and defines the trajectory of the crypto market as a whole. However, the exact moment of two cryptocurrencies' peaks does not always coincide. Bitcoin, for example, reached its peak in December 2017, while Ethereum reached its peak in January 2018. In 2021, Ethereum crested, for the first time, in May, months after Bitcoin's March peak, despite the fact that both cryptocurrencies' second peak occurred in the same month, November. This is vital to grasp because, if Ethereum is predicted to propel the recovery wave to new heights, Bitcoin's climb could serve as a predictor of the approaching high. Can Ethereum's 2021 growth be duplicated? If you bought Ethereum on January 1, 2021 and sold it on December 31, 2021, you would have made 382% on your investment. The growth would have been considerably more spectacular if you had bought in this cryptocurrency in early 2020 and sold at the peak in 2021, around 3,200% growth, but the annual growth is still fairly outstanding. But, how likely is a repeat performance? The cryptocurrency is just 39% down from its previous peak, which means that even if Ethereum reaches that level again, it will not be able to achieve a full 100% increase. And the chances of it exceeding that peak, enough to increase your capital by 380%, are extremely slim. However, if Ethereum falls further, ideally to a late three-digit price, you may want to consider purchasing it. Because it's a long shot, if you want to buy Ethereum for whatever amount of growth it provides, try to make a move as soon as the present slump's bottom is established. An ETF that invests in Bitcoin Investing in an Ethereum ETF, such as the C Galaxy Ethereum ETF ETHX, is one option to obtain exposure to the crypto market through an asset class that may be held in tax-sheltered accounts, as opposed to directly holding Ethereum. The ETF is still relatively young, having only begun trading on the TSX in April 2021, but it has so far faithfully tracked the performance of the underlying coin. This includes both the growth and the downturn periods, which are both less than 3 percentage points off. It has a 0.4% management fee and is available in the United States. At the moment, the total net asset value NAV, is $795 million. Naive Conclusion Ethereum's chances of repeating its 380% growth rate from last year are slim, unless it falls considerably farther than it has already. Before it can grow your capital three or fourfold by 2022, the crypto asset must become significantly more undervalued than it is now. However, if the current collapse is the lowest it will ever go, purchasing now and holding for the long term may be a good decision. We hope you enjoyed watching and listening to this video, please let us know your opinion in the comments area below. If you found our content useful, please like it and share it with your friends. Also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell for more crypto related contents.